Catfish, Drexel played great yesterday. Yeah, they uh, did. So expecting a big game out of them. They beat up on Wisconsin Whitewater Warhawks. So we'll see if they can take down Purdue. But Purdue lost a pretty close game to the Central Florida Knights. Yeah, yeah, they did. Looks like we got Purdue uh, with their standard breakout, uh, not going too aggressive. But, you know, kind of just filling out the waters right now. We have uh, Drexel doing the same thing. Drexel pushing into D3, though. I, don't, I didn't see if they got, off, got out there off the break, but that's a good spot to be in right now, keeping them out of, out of the wall here. Let's see, we got uh, Purdue still rolling their guns. Purdue definitely looks confident in their gunfights right now. They're rolling their guns, definitely exerting some pressure, yeah. a little bit tighter for Drexel. And then Drexel's going to make a move up the center. As well as a move into the uh, D1. Oh, center guy backs up to the can behind center wall. Looking for that uh, snake player trying to make that dive. Still looking snake way with the can. So we got the Drexel player being checked at D1. Looks like he's eliminated. Uh, Purdue player slipping into snake one. A little bit of commotion on yeah, the Drexel looks side. Like of the a field. major penalty assessed. On Drexel, I see a red flag on the ground. Yep, and a player moving in there, so major penalty on Drexel. That's not going to help things here for them. But they do shoot a body out of the snake. Purdue got uh, tried to get Zawinski in the snake, and he ends up getting taken out. So back and forth here, a little seesaw battle to start things out with Purdue and Drexel. But Purdue trying to utilize the advantage they have right now. And a little tactical retreat from Drexel. Gets back to the mini wall bunker. Drexel, just two players left alive for them in a minute and 33 seconds on the major. Purdue player coming off out that uh, tower in the back. It looks like we have the Purdue players two left, I believe. Stretched across the field. One in the little uh, tower behind the Dorito. And the one stand up tower behind the snake here. Purdue trying to find those angles. We got a Purdue player in the snake. Well, 50. Purdue had a one body advantage catfish, which they squandered, lost that gunfight, and now it's two on two. But Drexel, as long as they, well, they don't have to slow play this, but it would be definitely in Drexel's best interest if they could get that third body out of the uh, out of the penalty box, burn through the major, and still win the point. That's he, best case scenario for Drexel. They're under a minute on that penalty at the current moment. Looks like I think they might be trying to do that or. Well, Purdue loses that other body over there, so now it's just one player left alive. And the insert bunker here, the Temple on the snake side, their bottom left hand portion of your screen. I got him coming out at 640. Like Drexel just content on trying to let that, like you said, Matt, eat away at that penalty. Looks like we're going under 30 well, seconds. That's on the that smart penalty. play, right? Uh, yeah, it is a smart play. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're Purdue, might as well just concede the point. Yeah, even a smart play would have been to concede that point. You're right. Yeah, just concede the point and keep that, which is what they did. So. Now Drexel is still going to have 28 seconds left on that penalty. They do get the point. So Purdue at one, Purdue kind of blew it a little bit in this first point, Cat. Yeah. They were up three, three on two. There was a major penalty and weren't able to close. Lost a couple gunfights. So this was a good point for Drexel to fight through that penalty. But now Purdue will be on a power play for the next 28 seconds. 28 seconds, sir. I mean that's. That's a, that's a nice amount of time, but not a lot of time. Like you said, you know, you definitely want five players up, five guns up when you start the game. So they'll be starting four guns for the next 28 seconds. That's It's a big thing. You know, I, again, I would much rather be running into four guns than running into five guns every single time. <laughs> so let's check in with Lauren Kelly down in the pits with Drexel. Thanks. That major penalty there on Drexel was for playing on. The player had a hit in his rib area and kept playing, so that's why he got that major penalty. In the last few seconds of that point, coach in the Drexel pits was actually asking his last player not to hit the last Purdue player because he wanted to burn out the last 30 seconds. Obviously, that last player did get the hit, so they got the point, but they will be starting with a body down. We'll see what Purdue can do with this power play. And, you know, yesterday, uh, Purdue, they put some points on Central Florida. So, yeah. I mean, that's saying something, considering how well Central Florida is playing. I mean, Central Florida still won that match and won it rather convincingly. But we'll see. I mean, Purdue, uh, Drexel beat up on the Warhawks. But, I, you know, I'm not, we'll see. I mean, this, this, this could be a close game. Hopefully. Oh, we've seen a lot of blowouts this weekend. Purdue player running out to the snake. 
mini, cam a mini uh, tower in the back. Drexel doubles up the back center bunker and tries to roll the guns to even up the count. They do not shoot anybody, so still five players alive for Purdue. Pretty good cross field spread for Purdue. Purdue choosing to start pushing towards the snake side. Still nobody in the snake. There's Zawinski who's in the back corner bunker on the snake side. And now we're looking at Drexel's lineup there, right hand portion of your screen, all in the back bunkers. All five strong now, that penalty running off. And haven't taken much ground. There goes a little move. Back corner bunker into D1. Now we're looking over their shoulders here for Drexel. It's time. We've seen some long points this weekend, Catfish. Yeah, some very long points. Look for Drexel to hopefully push, uh, make make your way out to the snake side to try and stop a Purdue player, but it's a little too late as the Purdue player slips right in right now. Going to snake two, going into snake two. Now uh, Drexel player looking that way. But a little too late, sir. A little too late. Looks like we got another Drexel player uh, filtering through the Dorito side. One at Dorito one and one at Dorito two for Drexel. Two players still doubling up that tower in the back. I don't know how they're living back there right now. Well, one making the move up to the wall and making it clean, it looks like. Well, he makes it in clean. The snake player was getting too much pressure from the back center. Snake player for Purdue not able to look at that lane. And like uh, Drexel making its way to the tower behind Snake, Snake one. Maybe looking to filter in or just get domed in the head. That works too as he exits the field. Well, that evens up body count. It's now four on four. Drexel did have a five on four advantage, but it's now evened up, 5-12 to go. A one point lead for Drexel. Look for this Drexel uh, player at the 50. Keeps looking snake way, trying to keep that snake player at bay. Snake player at uh, snake two, it looks like. There you see a shot of a Drexel player at the wall, as well as some of the Purdue players trying to keep him at bay. I don't know why this, the coach for Drexel is not talking to the snake player. The snake player just laying there. You, you see the coach and then the Drexel player just scoots right in and almost eliminates that snake player that's just hanging out there. They fill out the back corner bunker, give a little bit of support here for Purdue's snake player. Oh, but he gets clipped, so. Purdue making it into the 50 Doritos as that player gets clipped. Yeah, but he gets taken or, out. Drexel, I'm sorry, not Purdue, Drexel. Yeah, but the Drexel player's taking the walk. Oh. Oh, oh yeah, he is. No, that's a Purdue player. Oh, you're right, and they and refilled that spot. And here comes a pain train, sir. Runs in from the center, down the highway, and that's Clement, one of the best players on Drexel. Making and that was a move, nice yeah. move. That opened things up and then move being made on that D side of the field to take out the last player for Purdue. So this is another point here for Drexel. Score will be two to zero. Just over three minutes remaining on this time. They look like they're just gonna walk it in. Stroll it right in, sir. So a couple long points here. Yeah, we got pound burning through some of this first half. I, I still feel like the teams are evenly matched. I know Drexel's won these two points, but I'm, I'm not hating what Purdue's doing. I like the uh, I like the game plan. It's just yeah. having a little problems with survivability on this snake side over here. And and Drexel was just able to take that ground. It was interesting because it looked like Purdue was pushing snake. Drexel's pushing on the D side as we're checking out some of these replays. So there's Clement up in the center for Drexel. Oh, and scalped his, right yeah, there. Yeah, his buddy gets caught in his bunker. Is that Kevin? And then here's this move from Clement. He cuts out wide, gets right to that inside part of the snake, and Just runs down the player in snake two. So let's check in down with Lauren Kelly. Thanks. I was just talking to Coach Zip in Drexel's pit, and he said even though they have an early lead, he thinks this is really going to be a back-and-forth battle. He said that Purdue has really great zones off of the break, so that's what they're really focusing on to try to get some kills early on. Well, that would help. Kills <laughs> early on would definitely help. I think that's the name of the game. I'm really interested to see how this field's going to play out in t in uh, in Dallas in a couple weeks, because we've seen so much, uh, so many teams really quickly getting their off the break shots dialed in. Yeah. And it's been tough to live off. It's been tough to get five bodies alive. So when the pros take the field in a couple weeks, 
I'm right. wondering how that's going to affect the game plans because we've seen a lot of aggression and a lot of people will be able to make it up on the D side. You guys are having a hard time kind of making out why the snake side seems to be the place that's getting eaten up the most off the break. So I'm just wondering if that's going to carry on. Uh, yeah. Probably. Yeah, probably. And, you know, not to take anything away from the kids out here, I'm grinding and, you know, playing their hearts out, but the pro, the pro level is a whole different level, the whole different animal, you know? So it's going to be a lot faster pace as well. So on the breakout, Drexel, heavy guns, though they do send a body around the back corner bunker on the D side to get into D1, and they get five bodies alive, five bodies alive for Purdue as well. And there's Purdue on your screen. And looking at the D side, and you can see Drexel now doubling up that back center. One gun shooting D side, one gun shooting snake side. Probably figuring out, hey, Purdue had been trying to push into the snake side of the field. Let's filter lanes that way. And it looks like Drexel first to drop a body. And then it looks like Purdue catches a Great. It's direct drove in the chest <laughs> on his run up to the center, but it bounces. Looks like that wall player uh, walking back and forth here, trying to get shots. It looks like he's going to try and do some work on, on the Dorito side. Drexel with a player in the D1. As Purdue is... Uh, Pretty evenly spread across the field. There's a shot of the Drexel players, and both of them living at the tower. Looks like we got Leon looking on the uh, snake way. Both of trying to get an angle to eliminate a Purdue's uh, stand up tower behind the snake. To free himself up to uh, make a run for the snake. But with that wall player right there, Matt, uh, switching back and forth, it's just going to be real difficult for. Her. Drexel are getting to the snake right now. So, after getting bounced though, the Purdue player who made it up into the center 50 has been real diligent at just trying to watch this lane here on the snake side. He might want to switch his gun up. I mean, Purdue has this snake side cover. There he goes. Get that gun on that D side of the field because the closest guy to him is D2. D2 is hot for Drexel. So the center player for Purdue can start trying to maybe find some bounce shots over there or just put pressure on that guy, keep him honest in there and keep him from moving up. Because that's the closest guy to him right now. Eventually, Drexel is going to try to get one of their bodies out of, of that doubled up back center and either get to the mini wall bunker back there or try to get up the field and take out this player for Purdue. Limpen uh, slipping right into uh, snake one from the tower. Looks like a Purdue uh, first to get into the snake. Looking for Limpen to come all around here. Tell him to go to the 50, which he does so eagerly. He goes, comes across, looks at the cross field shot. And then he's going to get one of his back players to come and give him a little bit of support. Limpan gets right here into the 50 yard line. So he's he's been doing it. He's uh, He's been getting in here pretty solidly. And a couple points, the points that we've seen him play. Now getting that cross field shot, but they don't have a lot of time to work with here. 45 seconds left to go. Purdue trying to put their first point on the board, stacking up all of the 50 yard line bunkers. 50 yard line on D side. Have a player at the center 50 wall and also limp pan here at the 50 yard line snake side. Drexel starting to feel the heat. Purdue stacks another body up right behind Le Pan. And there's a snake here. It looks like the tower looking snake way opening, trying to catch Le Pan or his little buddy behind him. Le oh. Pan gets grilled. So yeah, he, that's tough death for him. Oh, and then and Swinsky gets, gets in there and he gets taken out. So Drexel doing an awesome job of keeping the attack from Purdue stuck at the 50 yard line and then getting some couple kills. Oh, I don't know what, is that Clement? I don't know what he was doing. He took two steps out of his spot. All of a sudden there are bodies dropping all over the place for Drexel from that D side of the field. Oh, There's just not <laughs> enough time. So Kevin Leong somebody is. for Purdue was going to town on that D side of the field because all of a sudden Drexel looked like they had, they had all four bodies left alive. And then in the span of maybe four or five seconds, everyone came walking off. Wholesale. But unfortunately for Purdue, it was, <laughs> there was only three seconds left and they didn't have enough time to get the flag and, and hang it. So the score heading into halftime will be two to zero in favor of Drexel, though Purdue looked pretty good in that point. Yeah, that's a tight point right there. Both, both points have been tight. I mean, it's two points in 10 minutes. There have been some long points. Definitely been some long points. Long grinding ones. Yeah, I mean, we only played three points in that first half. Yeah. The two that were scored and then that no point. So some of the longer points that we've seen out here. <laughs> yeah. 
that's, but, that's for sure. But hey, we got a close game. Yeah, it's still close. Ten more minutes left on the clock, or in the next half. We got Purdue players wiping each other off. Well, if if Purdue can replicate that last point, things will look good for them in the second half because. You know, they knew that they were down on time, and so just as you see, no matter what tournament we're at, yeah. when you get down on time and you're down a couple points, those guys are going to play reckless, and they're going to play hyper-aggressive because they have to work with what they're given. So we're looking at this replay. But if Purdue can take that same strategy, load up the 50s, but have more time to work with, so be, you know, have effectively work their gunfights a little bit more because you're not forcing to play reckless and aggressive, then I think they got a decent chance of trying to tie this game up, Cap. Yeah, definitely good, a good chance to tie this game. All right, so we're heading into halftime. We're going to be back after these messages. You got number 12 in the box for a minute. I didn't think you were going to make it. Eric. 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 Yes, it will be on your side. All right, so let's check in with Lauren Kelly. Hey guys, I'm here with Michael Zalazinski for Purdue. Now going into this second half, you guys are down two points. Plenty of time to come back though, but you will be starting this first point in the second half with a body down. Uh, the person that got the penalty wasn't able to make it to the box in time, so he will be serving a minute. What is the best strategy for you guys when you're starting on the break with a body down? Um, for us, usually we try to hold back, but I think we need to push it this time. Um, they're pretty good at holding their lanes, shooting their guns, so I think we need to pretty much roll our guns and run up the field on them. That's what seems to be working, so that's what we're going to try to do. All right, we'll see if they can get some points here on the board. Stay tuned for the second half after this commercial. Welcome back, getting into this second half between Drexel and Purdue. But before we do that, let's take a look here at the schedule for the day. So you can see there the big win for Central Florida Knights over Michigan State, and then a big win for the Pirates over the Clemson Tigers. And after this match, the uh, Florida Atlantic Owls will be taking on the Yukon Huskies. And then we'll have the Texas A&M Aggies going to be taking on the UFC Knights. Can't wait to see that one. Then Temple will be playing East Carolina Pirates. And then the winner of this match will take on Liberty. And the winner of the FAU uh, UConn match will be taking on Penn State. So that is the day here, the NCPA Championships. Both teams to start the second half, send a body up to the center 50. And playing the aggressor is Drexel coming around. But Drexel loses two bodies. Looks like Purdue also loses two bodies. 
Purdue still serving that uh, that minor penalty. Looks like just under 40 seconds left on that clock, Matt. Oh, oh Drexel, Drexel. Catching, the, catching the flag up in the air here. We got Kevin Leon making his way out to the stand up behind with the snake. Snake one. Look for him to dive into snake one here soon. We got here. It's a one on one, Matt, if I'm mis not mistaken. With both teams have penalties. Look at Purdue's going to get their player out first in under 15 seconds here. Yeah, that's going to make things a little interesting here <laughs> as it, they're locked in a one on one, but Drexel has to wait for 37 seconds left. So it's going to be two on one for about 30 seconds to see if Purdue can use that 30 seconds to win this high body situation. Oh, he's here. running he's all the way. Look at this guy. All the way to the 50 uh, Dorito, making Kevin Leone's bunker look a lot smaller now. Well, he uh, hey, he sized it up perfectly. Yeah. And oh, he was able to get the shot. Yeah, so that's it, that was exactly what you needed to happen. There's 12 seconds left on the clock. They need it up. Nine, seven. Time. Oh. Nice work by Purdue. The player in the penalty box comes at Smith. Smith. He comes all the way out of the box, knows it's a one-on-one, -on -one, knows that the other team's going to get their guy out in 30 seconds, so he knows he doesn't have much time to work with. Runs all the way on the sprint, doesn't stop, goes all the way to the 50-yard line on D side, gets the shot on the back uh, Kevin Leon. on Kevin Leon, and then was able to get the flag running in. in now that the the, uh, the penalty will burn off for Drexel, so both teams because it was minor, okay. so both teams will start at full strength, but well executed here to make this a one point game. Definitely, the much needed point to uh, definitely bring it a lot closer than you know. Heads up play right there. Yeah, real good play. So check out a replay here. So this was that chaos in the center. Both teams had sent a body up to that 50, but both teams lost two players essentially at the start of this point. It's kind of a bloodbath point. Both teams with penalties, but just Purdue with Smith and that heads up play was the difference. Definitely uh, was a real, really nice heads up play. He knew how much time was left on the clock and just sprinted, like you said, got on his horse all the way to Dorito 50, making uh, Kevin Leon's bunker a lot smaller than it than it was. Well, I just like seeing ago. that because, you know, when you were talking earlier about the difference between high-level divisional paintball or high-level college paintball and say the professionals and the difference is the paintball IQ the difference is the, the the timing the gaps are so small at that level but I love seeing when guy a guy makes a play like that because that tells me he's using his brain man he put the situation together in his head he knew what he wanted to do before he even got out of the box he didn't come out of the box and then try to figure it out. No, he was he, sitting in there utilizing his time going, okay, I got a moment to think about this. Let me watch this play develop. And that is one of those things about the penalty box. I mean, it's just a net. So you can see the play develop. And then when you come out, have a, that positive impact on the game. It was just heads up play by Purdue. One point match right now, 8.33 to go. And on the start, a little bit more aggressive for Purdue in this point as they are pushing up to the center 50, a conservative guns up game plan here for Drexel. Drexel's been playing real conservative this match, and it looks like they've been doubling up that tower in the back. I don't know if it's producing any eliminations on the snake side. I haven't seen any yet, but they continue to double that up, Matt. Looks like produced uh, wall player trying to point out where Drexel players are. Drexel spread across on the gray area, looks like. So Drexel... Both teams still doubling up that back center, but more ground taken for Purdue. It's still five on five. Both teams content to sit in their bunkers and roll their guns, shooting towards the lanes. And the first body to drop is for Drexel, back corner bunker on the D side. Oh, Purdue making a move out to Snake, the tower Snake, and just getting flipped as he's going in. Continue trying to filter into the snake here. Looks like we're still evened up out of 4-4 now. Purdue, I would, I would say, looks a little bit more in control at this point with that player up at the wall. Well, interesting that both teams went to a very similar game plan and a very conservative game plan, more so for Drexel than Purdue, as Purdue did take the center 50. There's nothing conservative about that. But neither team wanting to really push the snake at all. Uh, Drexel is now threatening on the snake side. They do have a player at the insert bunker, and by his body language, it does look like 
he is thinking about making a move to Snake One. However, the player for Purdue is watching that lane, so you've got to be real careful. And there goes a the move from out of the back, stand up into the mini wall on the D side, and then they make another small move to the back corner bunker D side for Drexel. Looks like Drexel hoping to make their way either into Dorito 3 or the stand up wall in the center with that mini uh, wall move. Drexel player getting into the D1. Drexel trying to filter players out now, doing a good job of that. Looks like a Purdue player at the mini uh, wall in the back is having uh, gun issues back there. Looks like he's filling with his gun, got it back up now. Trying to keep Kevin Leong out of the snake here. Purdue player in the center wall doing a good job, going back and forth, listening to his team, trying to find the angle, trying to keep them from filtering through the Doritos. Look for a move from the mini wall right here and getting Oh no, the mini wall looking to battle the, the big wall here. Purdue filtering out two so snakes. Another think. really long point, Catfish. Yeah. It's, well, it's, this is a close game. This is a, you know, it's a one point spread, 5.32 to go, and even on the pretty even on the body count here, 4-4. Four, four. And no, no team wanting to give anything up right now. Yeah, th well, this is that situation because it's so close. No guy wants to be the the, the the guy that makes the mistake, <laughs> which gives it to the other team. So, just really conservative, locked in their in their lanes. And also, since this point's been going on a while, players are probably getting a little low on paint right now. Yeah. That is something as well. Which also <laughs> slows things yeah. down. Still two pods on the back of the player in the center for Purdue. Looks like Drexel is in the mini wall next to the Doritos and in Dorito 2 now. Looks for those two guys to uh, hopefully make something happen on the D side. Yeah, this is a real interesting time right now. Well, it's definitely slowed down even more. And here, actually, here comes the execution up through the center, and he's going to get him. Oh, I don't know if he got him clean. Yeah, he did get him clean. For a second, thought we might see a penalty there, but then Clement takes the spot for Drexel. Player for Purdue launches the snake one. He makes it in there, but Clement is just locked up on him. Clement's going to back up off that center bunker and try to get a better angle. Good move for Clement here. There might be a bounce shot from that angle. If Clement shoots the tip, but now he's not, doesn't gonna, it's not going to matter because yeah. the guy runs into Clement's gun. Clement shoots that player, then switches to the D side. So nice work by Clement for Drexel to keep this lead under four to play. Coming on, making his way up to Snake 50 now. Going to wrap and shoot that tower here. Uh, and missing his shot, he's gonna make it into their D, into their snake too. Kevin Leong trying to get that angle. Well, if Leong wraps around, he's gonna get a shot on this guy's back. Yeah, he, he, ooh, back he, had, a, he had a better shot a second ago, but he no, he needs to move oh, up. Right oh, there. there he did. Yeah, he just had enough of his back. So nice work by Kevin Leong to finish out that player. Just one player left alive. Kevin Leong's probably gonna have a good shot on him, or is it gonna be Clement? No, Kevin Leong finishes it off. I think they might actually Leong and Clement might have pushed. That last player for Purdue into the gun of their other, Drexel had another player on that D side of the field. Oh. I think that's the guy that might have got the last kill. Regardless, really smart, calm, collected point for Drexel. They preserve their lead. They burn a ton of time off the clock. So now Purdue is down by two with 3.23 to go. What do you think, Catfish? I think, uh, I foresee another <laughs> long point. I think Purdue's gonna, or uh, Drexel's gonna come out and just Pay conservative and you know, try and keep them at bay. I mean, they don't have to do anything right now. They're, I mean, it's not a big lead, but in this match, it seems like a big lead because the points are going so so long with both teams. And there hasn't been a lot of points, but it's been a very similar story. Is that you have Purdue trying to push into the guns of Drexel. Drexel coming with some of the more conservative game plans that we've seen. But I really like the gunfights and the control and the pressure that we're watching the Drexel players put on the Purdue players. So the Purdue players are looking for angles. They are taking some chances, sending a player to the center off the break. Looks like a timeout has just been called. Let's check out this replay. So I, I, the game plans that Purdue has been running are definitely game plans that could potentially pay dividends. But the problem is Drexel has just been hanging so tough in their gunfights and making real good counter punch moves. So as soon as they shoot a guy and they have an opportunity, they'll make a counter move. And um, so even though some teams can't play like that, they can't play that slow conservative ball, 
and uh, Drexel is doing it outstanding right now and pretty close to winning this match. We'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Believe, truly believe in the guy next year, we're gonna win. We are the scariest, nastiest, dirtiest team here, and we're gonna win. So, quite the puzzle here for Purdue, trying to figure out Drexel. Drexel not doing anything crazy, putting relatively conservative game plans together, uh, but Purdue not able to really produce much once they get up the field, and that's kind of been the story of this whole game. So let's check in with Lauren. Maybe Lauren has some answers. She's down with Purdue. Hey, Maddie, Purdue was using that timeout to figure out how they can get some quick points here. They said they want to get this point with a minute, so they have time to get that second point and tie it up or potentially take the lead. It sounds like they're going to run a double wall play to get as aggressive as they can and get that point within the minute. Well, it is about that time for a double wall play. You're down by two. You got three minutes and 23 seconds. The wall is the safest offensive option for you, particularly on this layout where we've been seeing Lots of guys get chewed up trying to make it far on the snake side. I think it's a little bit easier to make it up on the D side. However, Drexel, who's been doing a great job of containing the aggression of Purdue, is they know that this is coming. So I would expect Drexel to probably send another a body of their own up in that center 50 to, you know, you want to fight fire with fire, you put a guy up there. Maybe he can go through and get both of the players heading up to the wall. Regardless, we will see. It's been very tough for Purdue to produce any sort of offense in this match. And there goes the double wall off the break. For, uh, Drexel going with an incredibly conservative breakout here. Just taking the back spots, no forward progression. Yeah, I don't think they're going to be much forward progression on the Drexel side of the field here because, like I said, I mean, it's two points just under uh, three minutes now. And these points have been going long, man. I mean, the last couple of points have been five, it, six it minutes long. It wouldn't surprise me yeah. if this was the last point, I, yeah. to be honest. Looks like uh, Purdue still trying to catch a player. As soon as Purdue, I, as soon as Purdue player gets, catches a player, I, just, I foresee someone doing a stun up the middle on the Purdue side. Hopefully, he's trying to catch someone else. Drexel just shooting their guns nonstop, talking it up. They should know by now that there are two players in that center 50 for oh. Purdue and Purdue trying to, oh, hey, trying to produce. Yeah. You can't knock him for trying to produce. He's up in the center 50, they're down. He's half tried to do something, so yeah, he lost that gunfight, but that was his job was to go in there and try to produce out of there. Yeah. Unfortunately, again, Drexel is just doing such a good job of containment. <laughs> yeah. It's very tough and it gets frustrating very quickly when you're making spots and then can just not go anywhere from there. Yeah, Purdue definitely just not not making any moves. I mean, we're under two minutes now. I believe this is going to be our last point here, Matt. Mm, yeah, I mean, there's a really decent chance, but I think Purdue might start getting antsy. Yeah, they might. I think they're. I can already see. Uh, Back player on the D side, he's looking He's looking like he wants to move. The guy that's in the mini wall bunker, he looks like he wants to make a move. The guy in the center, he's just wrapping around, trying to while out. So I could see Purdue trying to make something happen here. Drexel shooting him up, and then maybe scoring. We could see one more point, but it, ultimately it's just not looking good for Purdue and their chances to win this game. Looks like the Purdue pits are just yelling at their players to go, that they got to go. Looks like on cue, one of them comes up to the can. But they also lose the black uh, back player, Matt. Well, this is what we, th you know, not surprising. Again, all these, all the guys on Purdue right now, they know it's at stake. They know they have to fight recklessly for it. 
is not the time to just kick it in your bunker and try to let a play develop. <laughs> this is a put a guy in, put a guy in and go time. Definitely, we're about to hit under 40 seconds here soon, and that's not going to be enough time for well, Purdue. Well, they, well they, they sent instead of attacking out wide, they were forced to push up in the center. So now double stacking up again in that center 50 wall and. It would probably help to have a body out wide. They do have one out wide on the D side in D1, but he's not that far up the field. Yeah, this, this match is over. We're about to hit under 20 seconds here, Matt, and I don't see any. I don't see Drexel doing anything right now. They're, they're not. Purdue player getting eliminated out of the center wall. That goes uh, their last hopes, I believe. Well, about two minutes ago went the last hopes, but here comes the stun up the middle on Drexel. Clement. Eliminating the other player that was at the wall. Clement runs down the last player and, and stays he's alive. alive. So there's still one body in D1, and he's going to be alive at the end of this match. So Drexel taking a, a victory here against Purdue, edging them out 3-1 to one in one of the lowest scoring games of the weekend so far. Yeah, definitely one of the lowest scoring games this week. But just win, baby. That's all that matters. Yeah, Put got that w, w on the board and move on. So Drexel University Dragons will be taking on the Liberty University Flames around 4 o'clock this afternoon. That's definitely going to be a good matchup right there as well. Well, Liberty, one of the favorites heading into this event, but Drexel is playing tough. The teams that are winning out today, it's the UCF looked really strong. Uh, they have to take on probably the favorite here. I, I think that's almost unarguable. I think Texas A&M is the favorite at this event. Yeah. They're taking on the USC Knights. Temple has to play East Carolina. And I've been pretty impressed by East Carolina. And then now Drexel taking on Liberty. So the winner of this next match will play Penn State. But before we get into FAU taking on UConn, let's check in with Lauren. Thanks. I am here with Josh Gable. Josh, congratulations. You guys are looking so solid this weekend. But talk to me a little bit about the Dorito side. Break it down. What are the best positions for you to get into so you can have that offensive play that we're seeing today? As far as the best positions, the Obama, it's clearly it, it's a great position to be in. Um, that, that position uh, dominates the D side line and then uh, buffing into the 10 and the 20 on the Doritos. Uh, moving up quick is important too. Awesome. Uh, when you are on the defense, um, what is the best strategy for you to communicate? How is communication on this field? Is it tougher to communicate with the players on the snake side or are you guys relaying information pretty well? Uh, relaying, relaying goes really well. Having a home player almost every point, uh, it helps. It benefits a lot to communicate between both sides and pass information along. All right, well, Drexel is having an amazing weekend so far. Good job. Stay tuned for more matches. All right, so stick with us here. One more match this morning. It's going to be Florida Atlantic University Owls taking on the University of Connecticut Huskies. Both these teams very seasoned in college paintball. The winner of that match will move on to play Penn State University Nittany Lions this afternoon in the last match of the day. So stick with us here, 2017 National Collegiate Paintball Association Championships. I'm Andy Marshall with Catfish, and we'll be back.
know, right? <laughs>